My name's Adam Good. I'm 28 years old. I've been a personal trainer for the best part of 10 years now. I did my qualification back when I was 18 and playing SG ball for the Cronulla Sharks. I wasn't actually originally thinking that uh, I was going to have a not even a full-time job in the fitness industry, let alone 10 years later and be talking about how now I'm a part owner and director for a personal training business in the area that I've grown up in. Why I originally chose to do my course in health and fitness was it was probably the thing that I had the most interest in when I was at school. Um, training was always just such a major part of my life and I think that having the opportunity to play representative football when I was young was probably largely to, due to how seriously I took my training and, and nutrition at a young age. So it was generally just something of a lot of interest to me, something that I was, I was really passionate about but was not thinking then that I'd have a career or, or have a job in the in the industry really by any means because yeah it was it was all about footy back then for sure. <laughs> My mindset back then with regards to rugby league and and playing first grade, like it would be a complete understatement if I would even just say that it was the absolute purpose of my existence like from such a young age I just known that that was what I wanted to do despite any efforts of rookie camps or meetings with welfare officers and things like that saying about life after footy and this and that and whatever mate I was this gun ho footy <laughs> absolute footy head you know like it was all I could think about it was all I how I determined success in my life was wh whether I make first grade or not and the type of career that I'm going to have as a as a elite level athlete. In my final year of Toyota Cup at Cronulla, actually round five, we were playing Parramatta at Parramatta Stadium. I got pulled aside, as we might we might pull you off early at, at the end because um, tonight could be your night. You're gonna you're gonna warm up with first grade, and tonight you, you could be you could be getting a run. And, uh, we warmed up and we were out on Parramatta Stadium and you know I think Gal came over and even gave us a little bit of a pep talk and we finished the warm up, got in the sheds, got in the huddle and everything like that and it was like kind of you know all right sharks on three, three, two, one. All right, boys, hate to, hate to say it to you, but you know tonight's not the night. How I actually got started working in, in the fitness industry as a personal trainer, I had a guy come and speak to us from a personal training franchise and came and spoke to us about this amazing opportunity that he's got with his business. He's worked out and he's loving his job and it's you know such an um, amazing platform for helping people. And after that speech that he gave, I, I pretty much chased the guy out of, out of the room and said to him, said, look, mate, everything you just said there, it sounds awesome. It sounds everything like what I want to do. Like, I'm, I'm really interested in, in finding out a little bit more about how I could come and learn more or, or, or potentially become a trainer. And yeah, I ended up I ended up working there and just absolutely fallen in love with it. I had um, uh, a lot of, a couple of really good mentors back then that weren't just really good p personal trainers, but just really good genuine people that um, taught me not just a lot about personal training and, and a lot about the fitness industry, but a, a lot more so about building relationships and things like that and the type of due diligence that you need to have to um, survive in the industry or just to, to, to live with a pretty high standard of yourself. How I felt back then with regards to the realisation setting in that I may never um, actually play first grade. I don't actually think it's somebody that's something that I've talked to anybody about in depth before. At the end of the day, I, I, if, I, if I was really good enough, I think I, I would have made it. So once I finished footy, I ended up going overseas. I left in January of 2012 and uh, I was always planning on doing a little bit of travel and seeing the world and, and, and meeting new people and having fun. I lived overseas for the best part of three years in the States for over half a year. I was in Sweden for just over six months. I was um, around the UK, South and Central America. Like I, I've seen and done a lot of stuff. When I eventually got home from that traveling, it was time to 
settle back into reality. I, I wasn't too confident that I'd last too long back here in Sydney because I think I'd, I'd even developed a little bit of, bit of bitterness towards just home in general because that's what I associated home with my failed footy career, really. <laughs> like, and like I said, I haven't really, I haven't really said that to anyone before. Hey, like I, I just, I, I really felt like a fucking, like a, a bit of a failure because I'd put so much into it. Like I'd really grinded like so hard, and I was never like. I was never the gun, like I was never scoring bulk tries or just making clean breaks, like I just never had that natural ability, I was the guy that was just, I was just working hard, like really, really hard and just wanted it so bad. I always said to myself, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, like I'm willing to do the work.